On this episode of Real Wins, we discuss how brand can increase property value, both in an initial lease-up or sell-through phase, but also long-term. If you find this or other episodes helpful, please like and subscribe on YouTube or your preferred podcast listening app. Let's jump right in. Mike, welcome back to another episode of Real Wins. It has been um, a minute, mostly because of me and my new baby boy. So not going to apologize that. We're really excited about it. Um, <laughs> It's been a it's been a journey, and um, but we're super thrilled that he's here. He's healthy. Um, our overnights are not very healthy right now in terms of sleep, but uh, hopefully that'll change in the next month or two, and we'll get a little bit more back on track. How are you? How are you doing these days? I, I'm good. I suspect I'm getting a lot more sleep than you are at the moment. Um, I remember those days of the first few months. Actually, no, I, I take that back. I actually don't remember because I, I feel like I've absolutely tuned it out and don't remember a thing from the first four months of either of my kids. Um, so I uh, have empathy for what you're going to and uh, going through and, and, you know, I know it's all worth it in the end, but, uh, but it's not, it's not easy, man. So I appreciate you jumping on, taking the time for another conversation here. Yeah, of course it is. Uh, it's my pleasure and, um, shout out to my wife for doing an amazing job because, uh, you know, we have two of them now. So we, we call our first one kind of like a bobcat, like he runs around like a crazy little dude. And so I'm usually chasing him and she's usually um, taking care of the needs of our newborn. So um, team effort for sure. She's, she's doing a ton. Um, well, I think what we want to jump into today is an exciting topic. I think especially for the developers and owners who are listening, because um, there's been a lot of, a, a lot of talk around this idea of, of brand and branding and how much do you need? How little should you invest in? How much should you invest in? And I think we want to sort of change the perspective of that question and say, or ask the question, um, what can brand do to actually maximize the value of your projects? And I think we can take this in a few different directions. I know you're excited to dive in. So let me pause there and kind of get your high level take on that as we dive into the discussion here. Yeah, I mean, I gotta be honest with you, I don't know what uh, websites you're reading or seeing, but I, I haven't seen nearly enough talk about the power of branding <laughs> or or building brands uh, around multifamily properties. And so, you know, I, I think it's become more and more obvious over time how important differentiating um, branding is, not just in multifamily, uh, but in companies around the world and you know i've used the uh um liquid death example many many times which they're selling mm -hmm. the most ubiquitous substance on earth basically water for a premium and now their capitalized value of their company is you know bigger than bigger than pepsis and, and other major beverage companies simply because of their branding and differentiation. And so if we can take that example, or there's plenty of others, there's you know companies like Apple who sell for a premium. There's no difference between my computer, which is a PC, and Chris's computer, which I know is a Mac. I don't think there's any difference in the world whatsoever, <laughs> except for the fact that there's a goddamn Apple on the back of it, right? And so- Watch out, so watch out for the Mac, watch out for the <laughs> Mac fanboys and fangirls. They're gonna come yeah. after you. Okay, so perfect. That's that you you've actually made my point. Why are there Apple fanboys and fangirls? It's because of the branding and marketing more than the technology behind it. Now, yes, the technology is good. The specs and the and the and the and the do bips and bobs that are in the computer and the keyboard slightly softer or so, slightly harder, whatever the hell you prefer. Sure, the specs are a little bit different, but ultimately the real differentiator for the product is their marketing and their branding. And so, thinking about how powerful and effective that can be in the same vein for a multifamily property uh, or, or new development project, whether it's condos or multifamily is, is really exciting to me and thinking about, cause I don't think there's nearly enough, um, developers thinking about how powerful brand can be again, not just to get faster absorption, but to maximize the long-term capitalized value of a property. The other thing that we like to think about is how brand can sometimes be aligned with this idea that you need a nice brand just to get the building leased up and then that's it. But I think the stance that we often take is, well, it's not just an investment on the quote unquote lease up itself. It's an investment in the business of this building, which for a lot of our partners, you know, they're not necessarily going to hold on to the building for the next 25 years. They're going to probably look to sell it. Um, it'll move hands. And if it's just a throw away, you know, call it logo and throw away name, the the impact of that brand and certainly the brand recognition and and maybe perhaps even to to 
Um, I don't think I'm stretching here, but the, you know, the experience of that brand in the property itself with the renters and so forth, um, is going to be drastically increased in terms of the value, uh, it brings to the property. So, um, talk a little bit about that in terms of, uh, early on in conversations, because I know you do a lot of consulting with your partners, Mm. where brand fits in and how do you decouple that from this idea of just kind of the first call it lease up phase of a project? Yeah, let me even step back. I think that's a good a good point. But I'll even take it back a step and say, look, I, I, we have worked with and partnered with and have advised so many smart, forward thinking developers who invest very, very smartly and sharply in things like beautiful architecture, in the right material choices, the right amenity designs, refining, revising, redoing their floor plan so that they're perfect. And then, then what I turn around and see this complete lack of a thoughtful investment or just, and I don't think it's a lack on purpose. It's just, there's not enough education and why this actually matters. And so you just have this, it just falls apart with, you know, a, 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 a basic logo and, and colorways with no clear differentiation, no clear uniqueness. That's, that is, that, that, that if it matched what was being delivered on site would be an amazing kind of connected proposition that's going to drive a lot more awareness, a lot more of uh, attracting a lot, a lot larger audience who is like specifically attracted to that property and frankly turn away the people who aren't a good fit as well in the same vein so you're you're attracting really a unique audience to the building that really wants to live there and is more likely to convert when they come in for a tour whether it's in the lease up or ongoing um um, stabilization phase of a property for however long a, a developer may own the property for um so like that's just the big picture of this to you know build a brand that can really activate an audience that's that's the right fit that's willing to pay um, for what that what that means to them into the in, in, in any given property. So, what does that mean for lease up? Right. So you start with lease up. What does it mean for lease up? For lease up, it means you're going to attract people faster and better without spending as much on ads or other sort of optimizations in the middle of the funnel because you're gearing the messaging to a specific audience that you believe is going to live in the property. You've built and designed the physical. Uh, asset to as well. You're 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 going to create a message that resonates with that audience in a powerful way, so that you know you have to spend less on exposing them to the branding and messaging in the sort of middle of the funnel stack of of ads and demand and ILSs and optimizations you need. And then they come on site, and if the brand is also matching what they're seeing on site for delivering for a physical asset, it makes it a lot easier to convert them. Uh, into a into a into a paying lease and in a resident as well. So there's so much there's so much powerful a- uh, value that gets added there that can accelerate lease ups in a, in a massive way um, that is totally understated in in most markets I've seen. Yeah, that that's a really great point, and it makes me think about the early days of the Apple in store launches when you would have this like very early awareness and kind of these build up campaigns about what is coming. Right. And then I was a part of this group, me and my friends and my like creative art, art and design buddies would be really excited about this. We would tell our friends, we would tell our family, we would go to this sort of opening event. We, we'd been on the, li- we truly, we would had been nurtured for, you know, weeks, if not months, we show up to the event, and exactly right. The sort of experience and the brand and the, and the, the physical space matched what we imagined and what we were sort of nurtured into over those many weeks and months. And it very much is the same thing in multifamily, where if you put the time in and you put the the effort in and you want to create that bespoke experience, then you're going to get those diehard fans that are going to tell everyone about it. You're going to get the right people that what you're looking for in that community, you know, whatever style of community it is that you're developing. And you think about the opposite of that. What if you don't do that? What if you just do a name and a one, two, three main street, and just some logo that you get, you know, for 500 bucks. What is it that you're actually building there? You have to ask yourself that. What are you actually building? Who are you actually attracting? And long term, what's the value in that, especially to a future, uh, you know, investor in that? T- totally. And I, I think one of the things that is uh, often uh, often happens is this um, 
sort of attempted de-risking of, especially of branding, but even also architecture and, and layouts that happens because, you know, oftentimes you hear, oh, how can we appeal to the most people? How can we appeal to the widest audience? Well, in fact, that's the exact opposite of what you actually want to do. And there's a great quote. I think it was Brian Chesky, the Airbnb um, CEO, who said, uh, I guess I'm going to paraphrase him here because I know the exact quote, but he said, you know, the goal is to build, is, is not to build something like thousands of people kind of like, but to build something beautiful that a hundred people really fucking love, right? And so that's kind of the same, the same concept of what you're trying to do with multifamily. If you can build something that a really core group loves, that's a more powerful expression of like what can happen in a market and leasing up and uh, attracting, leasing up faster, having more retention, have a better resident experience, which begets more of that because it's a sort of holistic self-fulfilling circle because when they, you know, they're, they're happy about leaving good reviews, the brand matches what you're, what you're delivering and they're happy to, you know, and they're proud to live in this um, a, a sort of expression of themselves almost in, the, in, in, a, in an effective brand because they were attracted to it in the first place. And it's, it's sort of a magical thing that can happen and it's far, far um, under invested and in, underutilized in the multifamily and development space. Thanks for listening to this episode of Transforming Cities, brought to you by Authentic, delivering premier multifamily brand experiences and smart digital marketing. Authentic's proven approach accelerates leasing velocity, boosts rental rates, and increases long term value. You can find out more at authenticff.com. And by Charles Gate the multifamily investor's secret weapon to help underwrite, go to market, and operate projects that generate market-beating returns. With an adaptive staffing model and on-demand leasing teams, Charlesgate empowers a better resident experience at an efficient cost structure for today's owners. Visit charlesgate.com for more. What do you tell new consulting contracts that come in the door that's, that are very much in the other camp of you know what? I hear you. I hear you, Mike, but you know what we've done, we've done okay over the years. And, you know, we, we just like this idea of, you know, this, you know, so-and-so's cousin who comes up with a, a name and a logo <laughs> and we kind of run with it and it is what it is. Um, how do you handle that conversation? Because I think really what we're talking about here is, is the future of multifamily and these, and how do you make a boutique community, a b- boutique experience truly unique? And it seems to me that the way it's been done over the last 10 years is not necessarily the way that it's going to be successful moving forward. Yeah, it's a good question. And, and it's hard because I think I think the market, the sort of called the development multifamily market is, is sort of 10 years behind in terms of the latest, uh, you know, cu- current modern thinking in terms of branding, marketing and positioning. And so, um, so, so it's, it's hard and I get it. There's, there's also a, an, an element that there's a, there's a perceived risk in perhaps investing more in, in better marketing or, or investing in this type of branding and marketing. And so I, I get all that. But what I point out is I think the things I just said previously in the conversation, if you look at examples from other industries, like the, you know, liquid death type of examples or other, other really interesting, unique, um, direct to consumer brands that are out there and how they are, um, how, how they're sort of creating a, uh, an, an army of followers b- basically by power of their brand alone. And I don't care whether it's clothing or water. Uh, these things are not massively differentiated products in and of themselves. They're differentiated by the branding and the marketing that they're putting out there. And so uh, that's why I'm, that, so that's the, the bigger picture. But the, the other part of it I, I say is like, there's, there's, it, think about this for a second. There's no reason why, if you look at across the spectrum of say multifamily uh, lease ups, why properties aren't regularly leased up, you know, 50% pre certificate of occupancy. You can't do that as effectively without an effective brand that people are buying into without being able to see a physical asset or tour, right? So that's one thing. The other the other idea, there's no reason why most multifamily properties are operating at 93%, 94% occupancy and not 97 or 98% occupancy. And that delta, a huge part of that is by creating the marketing, the brand, the messaging, the positioning that's going to enable you to attract at scale enough of the demand, enough of the residents that would want to live in that property and, and be able to sort of, um, uh, uh, be attracted to it and then, and then be willing to live in there with a good leasing effort and everything else that comes into it. But, uh, but those, those two things alone close a massive gap in such that the, the investment in branding is, is turns into a three, four, five, six, 10 X ROI return on investment for what you're getting in the first year, never mind sort of in the, in the lifetime of the property. And that really doesn't even speak to the potential capitalized value uh, when they go to 
say a developer goes to sell the property as well. Right. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. I think, I think the easy math for us has always been, Hey, if you have a 12 month lease up period that you're considering here based on all sort of the normal average things that you do, what if we, what if we took this game plan in a different direction and your go-to-market strategy was very strategic, was very creative, heavy, was very much leaning into a brand that we feel like can very much maximize the value of this project. What if we cut that? What if we cut that down from 12 months to nine months or eight months? You know, what is that? What is that value? Just even right out of the gate. And how many multiples ROI are we talking about on the cost of building that brand? And at the end of the day, it's not that much more of an investment, but it is a, a huge shift in where that needle is going to move for, for the future of that building. And I, and I believe that wholeheartedly. Yeah, exactly. And then, and those things all turn into, again, turn into capitalized value. When you have, you know, lower turnover rates, you have a higher, just a higher, constantly higher occupancy. You've got happier residents who could, because they're a fit for the, for the property, all of these things. Then when you go turn around and obviously exit your investment or sell the, sell a property, those, th those things are, are, are getting sold into the market. It's like, this is a, this is a desirable property. It's hugely attractive in the market. It's going to be consistently, full, you know, strongly leased up. And so you're then maxed maximizing that capitalized value as they go to sell the property as well. And, and you know, and just to even that point right there for a second. So like, there's also the point where even if you're going to own the property forever, even if it's not, uh, you know, a, a planned sort of three, five, six, uh, three, four, five year exit type of thing, if you can own it for long term, you still have, um, you know, what you typically see in markets where there's development happening, there's going to be new developments coming behind yours, two, three, four, five, six years down the road. So now, as a, as a generic sort of unbranded generalized property, now you're competing against these new kids on the block three, four, five years down the road. You're no longer the new kid on the block anymore. So you don't even have that going for you. So now your, your, your value is diminished over time because of that as well without a differentiated product. But instead, if you have this differentiated brand who is appealing to a core audience who has, who has an attracting residents who sort of love to live there because the brand resonates with them and the, the product and services resonates with them as well, they're going to, you know, bring in more referrals. It's going to be more attractive in the market in general. So then you don't, you have that differentiated value such that you're not a commodity pro product uh, that really hurts when you're, unless you're the newest kid on the block as a commodity product. If you're not the newest kid on the block, y your value is very, very limited, right? So, so, so this is where that can come in for that long-term so brand is not just an investment in lease up. It's not just an investment in pre-leasing. It's not just an investment in, and in, and uh, and in, in, in you know vanity. It's it's actually going to add value year over year over year, and then upon exit, if done right. Very long tail. I agree 100 percent that if you are able to to develop a brand that is going to maximize the value of your building, what that really means is long term, long tail. You're going to be top of mind for that specific type of renter that is buying into this brand experience, this vision that you've created for them. Where I would like to end this conversation is maybe a little bit with, uh, excuse me, with a little bit of an elephant in the room. Maybe, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I, I think it's kind of an elephant in the room. And that is, you know, what I see in new introductions is an overemphasis on all the bells and whistles and the doohickeys and the widgets. And there's almost this, this sort of tendency to invest less in brand to then invest in more of these widgets and plugins and AI this and chatbots that. And what my challenge is to the developers and owners out there is to really think about what's the foundation of the building long-term and building off of what you just said, because in my opinion, it's not this overemphasis on uh, one of the millions of chat widgets out there. It's not the overemphasis on the specific floor plan selector. It really needs to be, what is the building look and feel like? And how, do, how does a renter experience it when they walk through the door? How have you nurtured them into that experience? How are you following up with them afterwards? How are you keeping them in your building long-term? And it's not necessarily about organic ads, you know, social stuff and all these other sort of doohickeys that live in the middle, so to speak. But <laughs> Let me pause there. Does that, does that even make sense? Am I, I'm having a hard yeah, time articulating so, uh, that, but I think there's no. so much in the middle. Yeah, I, I, I definitely, it totally resonates. And I actually have one more elephant to add after that one too. But, um, 
Uh, absolutely. I think, I think there's in this in this industry and whoever's watching a video, maybe you can see my hands, maybe for your audio. Well, you have to imagine. But like this is the top of the wide funnel, which is where this maybe positioning and branding and messaging happens right at the top of the at the top of the funnel. Then you go down the funnel and you have uh, of, of when I'm talking about the, the leasing, the sort of sales funnel that leads people into being a, a, a resident. So in the middle, you have all this sort of um, distribution and sort of de demand you know, detracting demand section. So you've got ads, you've got ILSs, you've got social media, you've got uh, SEO, you've got all this stuff in the middle. You've got, you know, the widgets and things that go on your websites and all the other things that like, we're trying to like, you know, move the needle a quarter of a centimeter each, you know, each thing instead of really thinking about. And then you've got the leasing, leasing action at the bottom, the enablement function. So I, I think, yeah, so a lot of people, a lot of developers are just skipping over the, the most important foundational top of the funnel part of that, which will make all the rest of this work better if if really thought about and done away and it's also going to save you money in the middle it's going to accelerate that so it's going to reduce your overall budget over time lifespan so by thinking about that strategic positioning messaging beautiful branding that is what really unlocks the maximum um uh, the, the maximum action of the rest of this part of the funnel in a really powerful way. So I think that's, yeah, and that is often just skipped over because, uh, you know, I think there's sort of a lack of understanding what a brand really is. And it's not a, not a logo and a couple of colors. It's really, it's really that differentiated positioning that is the, the key thing and the core messaging of the, of the, of the property. So that's one piece. That's one elephant for sure. I agree with that. The other one, just to add quickly, the other elephant in the room is like, I've heard many times like, well, when I use those examples, like we'll look at Apple, look at, you know, uh, 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 liquid death, and like, well, we don't have the kind of budgets that those companies do. So what's the point of trying to brand our property? And so the point is you're not trying to brand the property any given property to a national audience. You're trying to like create a differentiated point of value within a really a micro area, a, a very geographic location, the way real estate works. You're not, we're not talking about Super Bowl ads here. We're not talking about massive spend. We're talking about differentiating it and dip in creating a brand that's differentiated within a micro market, a city, a neighborhood, that is what is gonna like extend it. Uh, so the brand doesn't need to be extended to a, some sort of massive budget, massive audience, nor does it have to be remembered by everyone in the country. That's not the point. What you're trying to do though is differentiate it with the audience that likes it. And it's gonna actually reduce a lot of the excessive spend on things like ILSs and uh, paid ads and this stuff down the road so that the investment actually you know, decreases the amount of overall ad spend that you might need over the lifespan of the property as well. So yeah, those are a couple of good elephants to, to bring up in myths that are um, not, not, not true. Yeah, no, I love it. I, I think that, um, I think that the way that we can think about that just, you know, at, at the ground level is like, where have you been in your city? Or uh, if you've been traveling, like in a, in a city that you visited recently, um, what spaces have you been in that have resonated with you? And I'm willing to bet that nine times out of 10, those spaces are well-designed, well-curated, the architecture is nice. There's a, a brand that fits that nicely. Maybe there's specific music playing or a speci specific smell in the air. Who knows what else? But those are the things that we're talking about here. We're not talking about uh, the 10 other places that you visited on your trip that you, you don't even really remember because it's not memorable. Um, we're very much thinking about those, those first um, examples. So yeah, thanks for sharing that elephant. I, this became an elephant conversation in the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, that's the way it usually goes. I mean, this is again, the, I, the, the point that I, I led with, or I think you mentioned, I, I jumped in on saying that in fact, not enough people are talking about this so that there is this massive elephant in the room that like, we actually should be talking about. It's like, there is that you need to differentiate a product if you want to maximize its value. Mike, thank you so much for this conversation. Um, already, already at time here, and my earbuds are falling out. So we're just it's, we're ready to wrap. So thanks for another uh, followed episode. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. See ya.